Good morning, church. Thank you for joining me here at St. Joseph's, and I hope that the words and music of this service will speak to you and give you some peace for the week ahead. As we gather, it is our tradition to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit, the Anishinaabe peoples, on whose land and by whose waters we gather to worship, to listen, to learn, and share together in the name of our Creator, the Holy One of Blessing. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May His grace and peace be with you. May He fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite any children who are watching to come a little closer to the screen and join me for this little message from my home. Oh, hi kids, hi, it's Father David again, and here I am uh, at home once again, and I uh, have something to show you. Any of you know what this is? Oh, well, it's a telescope. And I think you know what a telescope does, right? It helps you see things far away. Well, but before I forget, here's a little video clip I wanted to show you as well. It is from Auntie Paula, and it was taken at St. Joseph's a couple of years ago. Have a watch. Ready and go. Let it go. Let it go. on the ground washed it for a while but it disappeared and even if they had my telescope with them eventually they wouldn't have been able to see it. You know that balloon and uh, my telescope made me think of one of those stories that we have uh, from the Bible today. And it comes from something called the Acts of the Apostles and it is a story about Jesus uh, ascending to heaven and this last Thursday was called Ascension Day, Ascension meaning rising and it is the last time that Jesus was with his disciples on earth. Jesus had gotten the disciples together so that he could 
teach them one last time so that they'd understand everything that happened. And so he taught them and told them about his resurrection and his being raised on Easter morning and what all that meant and how it had already been explained in scripture. And he also told them that he was going to be leaving, but he was going to leave them alone. He was going to send them a companion. And we call that companion the Holy Spirit. And next Sunday is going to be Pentecost, so we're going to be celebrating that, but we're rushing ahead a little bit. So as Jesus explained all these things to the disciples, he raised his hands and he blessed them and then he rose to heaven. And they stood and watched him disappear. And you know, even if they'd had my trusted telescope, they wouldn't have been able to see him for much longer. Now, what do you think the disciples felt at that point? Do you think they were sad? Well, apparently not. Apparently it says in the Bible that they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they praised God because they understood what Jesus had told them. You know, you and I don't get to see Jesus physically. But that doesn't mean that we don't know who he is. We don't see him with our glasses, or without our glasses, or with our telescope. And yet we believe by faith. We believe who God the Father is, who Jesus is, and what he's done for us, and who the Holy Spirit is. And so on this day when we remember Jesus rising to heaven, we remember that like the disciples, we can have great joy, and we can praise God giving thanks for all that God has done for us. Amen. And see you soon. And now for our reading of the word. A reading from the book of Acts. So when they had come together, the apostles asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white uh, robe stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, and John, and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Altheus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the rain shook 
and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth, sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. A reading from the second book of Peter, beginning at chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and that and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Well, some of you have seen the photos we have been posting on the squirrels that have nested in our mailbox during the COVID-19 crisis. One of the things that we learned quite quickly was that the mother was very protective. And if you went anywhere near that mailbox, you got a severe warning and she displayed some very aggressive behavior. But that isn't within her nature to protect her offspring. Do you know, one day those little squirrels will have to leave the comfort of the church mailbox and the protection of their mother. And when they do, the mother will not be able to protect them any longer. She had tried her best to protect them, to guard them, to keep them safe from those who would harm them. But at some point, they must go out into the world even though she knows that they are at risk. To leave them to what can be a hostile and threatening world. Today's Gospel has some extraordinary insights that speak to that world and who protects us. The Gospel starts off with Jesus at prayer. It is a prayer that he offers to God just moments before his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was aware that the time had come and that he must soon leave them. From deep within his soul, he prays for those who have accompanied him on his journey, those he had taught, those he had shared meals with, those he had loved. He had tried his best to protect them, to guard them, to teach them, to keep them safe from those who had intention to harm them, to nurture and care for each one of them. He was aware that they must now go out into the world 
even though he knew that they were at risk, to leave them to what could be a hostile and threatening world. But as concerned as Jesus was for disciples, he did not despair. As sad as his departure would be, he knows what he needs to do. He does the one thing that will make the most difference for them. He prayed. He prayed to God the Father. And in that prayer, he entrusts the future of the disciples to God. And I believe at the same time, he entrusts our future to God. We are blessed to have this account of prayer that Jesus offers. For it is an extraordinary prayer. And I think it is important that we hear it once again as we face the world that we now live in. Not just because of its content, but also because of its ability to encompass us as well as the disciples. We are part of the community for whom Jesus offered this prayer up for. It's a wonderful thing, I think, to think that Jesus has prayed for us. That Jesus has prayed for all of you who are watching from home, wherever you are. Jesus has prayed for you. By the powers of technology, we are part of a community now. Even though we're scattered, we are together. We are the community that Jesus left behind. We are as much in need of prayer as well. The prayer Jesus offers is not a prayer to remove us from the world and the effects that can have upon us. Jesus did not say that his followers would not experience the effects of COVID-19. Jesus prays to God, I am not asking you to take them out of the world. The disciples must stay and complete their mission. We must stay and carry on God's mission. We are not to ask to escape the world because that would only frustrate the divine purpose. How could God's kingdom be fulfilled if we were removed from the world? How would the world know of God's love if we do not proclaim the good news of reconciliation? It is not our desire to abandon and escape from the world, but to win the world over for God. You know, during our time together here on YouTube, you've probably heard me preach that we need to hear more about God's Word. That we are commissioned to go out into the world and share the gospel in word and in action. That God has a mission for us as individuals and as a community. That we are to care for the sick, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. We are to love our neighbors. We are to love our enemies. We are to proclaim the good news of salvation, to convey to the world the revelation parted by Jesus Christ. And if that's not good news enough, Jesus tells us that we don't have to do it alone. He prayed to our Father in heaven that we should be protected and guided as we answer that call. Today we hear the prayer of Jesus, and as we do so, we recognize that it is not all up to us. We need to recognize that we as an individual or as a community are going to do it all on our own. And we don't have to do it all on our own. We cannot control all things as much as we try. 
Jesus knew that. And that is why he offers up this prayer. Jesus recognizes that God the Father is responsible for our nurture and our future. While Jesus commissions the community, he wants the disciples to know that they are not to think that they can rely solely on their own abilities, but they must rely on God to care, to guide, and direct them. We, too, are to understand that life rests in and depends on God's care. We are willing disciples, and the future of even the church is decided by God, not by us. And during these past few months, I am comforted by that thought, because I don't know what the future church even looks like. What will church look like after COVID-19? I don't know. But I do know that the church will live on and be stronger for it. And there is that old saying that says, I know not what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. It has become clear to me that if we try to meet the future only with our own strength, we will not succeed. If we forget to seek God's help, we will not succeed. It is only through God that we can experience the fullness of life as God intends it to be. We come together here virtually each week to seek some comfort and a bit of refuge, I think, just like those squirrels in our mailbox did. Come here to have a safe time, a place to go, and just perhaps to escape from the world for a little while. I have to tell you that at the end of this service, when the last hymn is sung and Deacon Mark dismisses us, the world will be there and very little will have changed. The news reports will still be full of COVID-19 news and other assorted news. This is our world and it is in the rough and tumble of life that we must live out our lives. But I hope you feel some hope and comfort by being reminded that Jesus prays for you, that God does love and care for you. I want you to remember that this week, that Jesus has prayed for you and for this virtual community. And that does make all the difference. We live in this world with that wonderful knowledge. As you leave me today, I pray for your safety, and I ask you to pray for those you know and love. I pray for you as Jesus did, that God will protect you from the evil one that wants to distract us and drive us into unbelief. I pray that as difficult as your week might be, that you will remember that Jesus has prayed for you and that God will give you the strength and courage that you will need to meet this week and to carry on his mission at the same time. And know that God has and will continue to answer the prayer of Jesus for all of us. God bless you all. Amen.
Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus has ascended into the heavens, let us pray in confidence to God our Father. We pray in thankfulness for those who introduced us to Jesus and for those who help us along our spiritual journey. We are thankful that our spiritual journey here on earth will end at the feet of our risen and ascended Lord. We pray for one another in this church as we worship in our homes with the help of Father David, Deacon Mark, Sarah, and Rob. It's not the same Lord, but we know that you are with us wherever we are. You are our refuge and strength. And for this, we are truly grateful. We are truly grateful also for our selection committee who continue to work diligently to discern who, have been, who has been chosen to be the next incumbent for our parish. We pray for Father David as he contemplates his new life of retirement. Heavenly Father, we did not know that this pandemic would affect us for so long. We did not know how anxious and worried we would become. We unite in prayer for those suffering from the virus, those caring for the ill in their own homes, the hospital or nursing homes. We pray for those who are alone and for the families who cannot be with their loved ones. We need your help, Lord. We need your spirit to guide us as to what we may do to help the vulnerable and to show your love to this world in so much trouble right now. We pray for your peace for those who are anxious or grieving. We pray that you will continue to strengthen and sustain all those who are serving in so many ways in response to the virus. We pray that your Holy Spirit will help us and help the medical, scientific, and political leaders to discern what advice to follow as they work towards opening our country. And may we, as caring citizens, follow the guidelines brought forth for the good of all. We pray with hope for the healing and restoration to wholeness for all who are ill or troubled, damaged or depressed. Lord, we are your people and you are our God. We need you. Everyone needs you. We especially pray for our children, our grandchildren, and for all who do not know you. We pray for all who have lost their way. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit in all areas of your church and your world. We pray for godly leaders and advisors all over the world who will speak out against injustice and evil. We pray for those leaders who are trying to understand the situation the world is in and are acting in a responsible way. We also pray for the leaders who turn their backs 
on the scientific and medical advice and go their own way to the detriment of those they serve. May you change their ways. But finally, God of all, we pray with joy as we celebrate Jesus in our lives and his entering the glory he so full, richly deserves. Accept these prayers, merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go forth now into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. And honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together with me today, and you have blessed me with your presence through the wonders of technology. Daily we have been encouraged by better news and for the hope of some recovery. And certainly the good weather this week has given our spirits a lift. And so we give thanks to God, the mercies that we have received. Please join me next week, and until then, keep safe and keep the faith. Peace, to love and serve the risen Lord. Alleluia.